Breakfast is the first meal of the day and is regarded by most as the most important meal of the day. But how did we get the word breakfast? Where did this word come from? Well, it means the breaking of the fast, or to eat something after having fasted the night before. Chinese breakfast vary greatly between different regions. In northern China, breakfast fare typically includes steamed bread, unleaved pocket bread with sesame, steamed buns with meat or vegetable stuffing, with soy milk or tea served in Chinese style as beverages. In southern China, represented by Guangdong province, breakfast include rice porridge prepared to a thicker consistency than those sold in Shanghai, and side dishes are not served. Kanji is served with Chinese twister colors if it's plain. Now we're going to prepare the famous Chinese youtiao, which is kind of like a sort of twisty bread. Like any good doctor, my hands are very hairy, so I got to prepare for my operation. And I am ready for my surgery. So we take the youtiao. And for this patient, I'm going to recommend dissection. And another piece. And another piece. There is my yo tiao. And of course, this is going to be eaten with the kanji. It's kind of like in the West how we have soup with crackers. Well, they're going to use the yo tiao to soak up some of the extra kanji, make sure they can finish it off. In many cases, however, kanji is prepared with meats or dried vegetables such as beef slices, shredded salt pork, and century eggs. Fish or slices of pig's liver and kidney can also be served with or without Chinese twisted crawler. Other breakfast options include pan fried noodles with bean sprouts, spring onions and soy sauce, turnip cakes, and rice cake wrapped in bamboo leaves. The dim sum breakfast is a world in itself and is often eaten as brunch at specialist restaurants. Well, if you're like me, you probably don't have a lot of time to eat in the morning. I usually skip breakfast, which isn't very healthy. However, for those who do have a little more time, in Canton, one of the big pastimes is to go out for morning tea and enjoy dim sum together. Whereas in the West, we have a little something called brunch, which is kind of like a late breakfast, early lunch. And at this, you can either enjoy a continental breakfast or a kind of buffet meal with a whole bunch of selections. Western people seldom eat rice products at breakfast. It's because their staple food are bread and cereal, and most of them emphasize the nutritional value of the food they eat. In Europe, as a general rule, traditional breakfasts are less substantial and less elaborate in the warmer, more southern countries bordering the Mediterranean. While breakfasts are traditionally larger, with a greater variety of dishes and greater prevalence of hot dishes in the cooler northern and central European countries. A continental breakfast is an institutional meal plan based on lighter Mediterranean breakfast traditions. It is a light meal meant to satisfy you until lunch. A typical continental breakfast consists of coffee and milk or hot chocolate with a variety of sweet cakes such as brioche and pastries such as croissants, often with sweet jam, cream, or chocolate filling. For Cantonese people, they may care more about the taste of the food and seldom eat cold breakfast. Different seasonings and supplementary ingredients compromise the taste. You must have seen this rice noodle roll served with soy sauce before, but I think you might wonder how it's made. So we're going to start out here first by making our kind of rice flour paste in order to make our roll. And I need to get it out of the basket. This is what it looks like. And you'll notice that the rice is a little bit thicker, a little bit rounder. It's not quite a pearl rice, but it's definitely a thicker, rounder sort of rice in order that it dissolves kind of better into the paste. All we do is we take that, we pour it in here into our big grinder. We've got a little bit of water coming through and it's going to force the rice down. And as it comes down, it's just going to get ground up into our nice big paste bucket down here. Just force this all down into the tube. You can take a look. It's almost 
somewhere between kind of like a milk and a glue in terms of consistency. It's pretty steamy. It's like I'm in a steam bath or a sauna here. Anyways, we're gonna make the actual rice paper roll now. So I grab my tray, a trusty oil brush. And now I'm gonna take a little bit of the mix, maybe about a pinch that much. I'm gonna take a little bit of chicken. Ugh. Oh yeah, this is actually pork instead, my mistake. Feels like brains though, it's really gross. Ugh. I grab a scoop of our actual paste and I just pour that on. And then I have to sort of slosh it around the tray. There, just about ready. And then I just simply shove it into the steamer. That's gonna be ready in about 30 seconds from now. There's an assembly line. <laughs> Take my knives and I'm supposed to scrape this up. Not really sure how. They just roll it up, I guess. And bring it back. <coughs> this plate. <laughs> so. Here is my somewhat admittedly lopsided creation. Nevertheless, it looks tasty enough to eat, so I'm gonna go over and put the sauce and stuff on it now. So, a little bit of oil. Chip. And then just a jung. And then I'm gonna add the soy sauce on as well. Nice liberal helping. Okay. Traditionally, People in Britain and Ireland have enjoyed a substantial hot meal for breakfast, featuring eggs, bacons, sausages, accompanied by toast and tea or coffee. This traditional cooked breakfast has largely been replaced by simple light foods mainly eaten cold. Today, most Americans and Canadians eat a reduced breakfast, but many still enjoy traditional hearty breakfast on weekends, holidays and vacations. Actually, in some ways, the Cantonese breakfast of congee and this rice paper roll is a little bit just like a whiter Western breakfast. We usually add a little bit of milk and maybe a little bit of sugar or fruit or other things to give our oatmeal some flavor. Not usually meat and vegetables like the Cantonese, though. On the other hand, this, well, I guess the closest thing we would have to this in the West would probably be an omelet, of course. We mix up two or three eggs. And in this kind of food, the omelet kind of food, we would throw lots of things in, maybe ham, peppers, tomato, definitely cheese to give it flavor, pretty much anything you can think of. So that would make it a much fuller, more complete breakfast. However, things are beginning to change. More and more Cantonese people are accepting Western breakfast since the market is varying and the pace of life is getting faster. They may just grab a piece of bread or hamburger and drink a bottle of milk or coffee in the morning and go to work. If you want to know more about the differences between Cantonese and Western culture, why not start by trying the different kinds of breakfasts? <laughs>